because some of my best performing videos are the videos I shot with my iPhone. I literally made $60,000 off of a video I filmed at a new home community with my iPhone. The audio is horrible, everything's horrible, but sometimes people just like seeing that organic type of behind the scenes video. So I put a video out there, of course, like it was a video of like, hey, we have one spot open on our team. Here's how awesome we are. And I had a hundred agents apply. Wow. And I'm really building more of a very small but mighty team, but my coach is like, Shannon, you have so many agents that want to join your team. Why aren't you growing more? Um, but that's my own struggle. World-class lessons from the real estate industry's top 1%. Empowering agents to think bigger and do more to create life by design. You get access to exclusive interviews with top producing real estate professionals. Listen in as we talk about their journey in the business, best practices, and lessons learned. Hosted by Kiron Nasrallah and John Scipioni. You mean one thing that we always say in our office is just action is better than perfection, right? This is Light It Up with Lighthouse Residential. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Light It Up Podcast. We are thrilled to have with us today Shannon Gillette, who leads the Gillette Group out of the Phoenix Southeast Valley area. Shannon's here today to talk to us about some listing marketing. She is known very well for her uh, marketing on YouTube, Instagram, and all sorts of different content creation. So super excited to spend some time with you today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Awesome, Shannon. I have to say, you got better at these intros. Just killing it. Left and right. <laughs> That's My awesome. job here is done. <laughs> Wrap it up. Shannon's out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, right? A hundred and... Uh, yeah, I did not jump into the units. I did not give you the credit. So this year, about 106 units closed. Got a lofty, lofty goal of $100 million in sales volume for 2023. Hell yeah. Everything I know about you, I think uh, you'll definitely hit your goal next year. Super excited again to have you here. So we're excited to learn some more from you. Oh, nice. I'm nervous about these lightning round questions, man. You, you should be a little bit nervous. In advance. <laughs> um, I'm sweating for you, but uh, now it's all fun and games here. Good. So now that we've made you sweat a little bit, let's jump into it. <laughs> All right, so what alcohol can you never drink again? Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't drink too often. I don't know. I don't drink wine or I don't know. Maybe <laughs> wine. I don't drink wine. What's yours? Absolute. I can't drink absolute anymore. Jose Cuervo for me. Really? If I even smell it, it's just like Cancun. It's 2000. like the first time you yeah. puked. It's like, yeah. Something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been fired from a job? No. Well, I mean, I, I've been a, in, you know, a realtor for 17 years. So I'm sure over the years there, there have been clients that have fired me, um, but not from an actual job. Fair enough. What's an experience you've had that not many people know about? I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. Man, that was just a, that's a tough one. I mean, a lot of my experiences, I think of real estate, right? Doing this for so many years. And one day this guy called me up from his hospital room and said, Hey, I want to buy your $2.6 million listing, but you have to come to my hospital room. And I sat next to him for two days in his <laughs> hospital gown. And he ended up just being a lonely guy. That wow. Company. You didn't see that coming? I was hoping that that would have a good ending for you. I know. It was an experience <laughs> I will never forget. But you have to, sales 101, you have to treat everyone like a buyer. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that like this world of real estate, I always tell people it's not a, it's not a business, it's not a job. It's like it's a lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So I asked you, what's an experience that most people don't know about? And it always comes back to real estate <laughs> somehow, right? Because there's yeah. a lot of experiences, right? Hard to pick one. Every day is, is an adventure. Oh, my God. That poor man. <laughs> no, poor me. I'm Man. just teasing. I'm just teasing. He, he made you go to him. Uh, he's like, can you grab me that cup and that stool, please? I need it. <laughs> uh, this is a good follow-up question then. What's the most embarrassing real estate related moment you witnessed? I think any time, because we're texting so much, right? Like ev my phone just constantly ringing and dinging. I try my best to never do this, but I think accidentally sending the wrong text to a client when you think you're sending it to like a teammate or something yeah. can be very embarrassing. I've been there. Yep. Yeah. It's that we're just using Siri and uh, talk to text and just, you know, not yeah. sending the right information. What do women want? 
in life, in relationships, yeah. business. You could take it any way you like. Man, I think women want a lot of things. It gets easier know. after this, Shanna. <laughs> Hang in there. Oh, man, I don't know. All real right. estate, they want real estate. <laughs> okay, yes, real estate. We're letting you out of that one, no problem. <laughs> Last question, if you could spend a whole day with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? I think I'd go, since this is a real estate podcast and I have big goals for 2023, I think if I could pick anyone, it would be maybe a developer or a buyer with an unlimited budget to just go look at multi-million dollar homes. Be a good option. I like that. And a buyer who's not in a <laughs> hospital room. In yeah. A room. <laughs> oh man, that, that's a good story. I mean, I, I know obviously it was an unfortunate event, but that's something that uh, will stick with you. You're like, when do we put in the offer, actually? <laughs> like, been here for uh, 24 hours already? It's oh, like tomorrow. my gosh. All right, awesome. Let's jump right into it. So, Shannon, can you give us a little bit of background? What did you do before real estate, and how did you get into the industry? So right out of high school, I started leasing apartments and quickly fell in love with just helping people find their home where they raise their family. And in 2006, I got my real estate license and I started selling new homes for a builder. I did that for about eight years during the recession. I was one of the number one new home sales consultants in the entire country. So that was back when you really had to sell the product. You really had to overcome those objections and be disciplined. It wasn't easy to get somebody to buy a home you know, during those years. And then I got married, I started to have kids, and I really wanted to get out of that more corporate environment where I felt like I was locked in an office. I had no flexibility. So in 2014, I left new home sales and went into resale and really started from scratch, even my own family didn't consider me a realtor, and I leaned all into video, social media, and now you know I'm honored to lead one of the top 15 teams in the Phoenix Southeast Valley with most of our business coming directly from YouTube and Instagram. That's impressive, and especially when you did that in such an early phase of video content and social media and leveraging it for business. How did it, did it pick up right away? How was that progression of growth? That's a great question. What happened is, I, I don't know if you're familiar, if you have a lot of new home builders in your market, but we have a lot in Phoenix. So I represented the builder and I was in my sales office. People would come in with their with their agent and they would want to buy one of my new homes, but they had a home to sell. And I started to see a trend where realtors were all doing the same thing. They were taking a few pictures, they were putting a sign in the yard and they were throwing the home up on MLS and the home wouldn't sell. So then I couldn't sell one of my new homes. So when I got into resale when I could actually list homes and market them, I really was one of the early adapters of listing video marketing where I'm on every one of my videos. And I went on a journey to find out how to target market these videos, get them in front of thousands based upon somebody's internet search history, and really step up that listing marketing beyond just throwing the home in MLS. And I... I made a promise to myself early on in 2014 that I would never list a home without a professional video with me on the video. And, you know, here I am in, you know, 2023 now where our average YouTube video is getting, you know, five, 10, 20,000 views. Well, the, the one thing that you said that I don't, I don't know people, if they will actually hear that is you're, you're looking at, um, th th there's three pillars in every industry. Uh, it's attract, convert, deliver. In real estate, it's lead generation, lead conversion, and then delivering on what you said through the administrative backend staff. By understanding the lead generation side, being able to target market the people that you want your content to go to, that's a whole big learning lesson in itself that brings so much value to your team and to anybody who wants to actually generate leads. So that's, that's really, really strategic. Instantly click where you were getting leads and referrals from that, or did it take a while for it to like compound? Well, I think a lot of realtors want the overnight success. They want to post one video and get 50 calls. They want to host one open house and get 10 leads. But video takes time. It probably took two or three years of being consistent with video, getting my face in front of the camera, updating my Instagram stories every day, 
filming a listing video, even on the days I did not want to get in front of the camera. Um, but now, I mean, with YouTube being my number one lead source, it's so powerful and video is so powerful where people feel like they know, like, and trust me, because if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see all types of content, you know, me interviewing the mayor or our favorite restaurants. I've even gotten my kids on my YouTube channel now showing their favorite trampoline park. So now I go to listing presentations and people answer the door and say, you're so much taller in person, right? I don't even have to get out the actual presentation because they've done so much research online and watched so many of my videos. And we're in a new market right now, especially here in the Phoenix area. You know, we're basically in a buyer's market. So homes are not selling in a day. You have to lit, you have to market your listings. And I'm so excited to talk to you guys about that because buyers and sellers care more than ever who their realtor is right now. They are Googling us, even if they don't tell you they're Googling you and they're going to YouTube to search things like realtors near me and watching videos to determine who they want to hire. I mean, clients are telling me this all the time. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. I think you hit a, a lot of uh, great topics there. I mean, for for agents, I mean, I think your your answer is going to be focused on YouTube, but I'll let you answer it. Um, for agents that are newer to social media and just sort of dipping their toe in the water, uh, you know, you see a lot of people putting things out on Instagram, of course, and TikTok. Would you say that uh, you have a preference or you, you would push newer agents to YouTube first? I think YouTube is so powerful and you have to think of YouTube as a search engine, as a realtor and think of people that are maybe because in Arizona, we have a lot of out of state buyers. So a California buyer is going to YouTube and typing in like best neighborhood in Queen Creek, Arizona, best realtor in Chandler, Arizona, and they're finding the agents that have a good YouTube presence. So it's so powerful, but yet I don't want to discount Instagram because Instagram was my number one lead source last year and I will never not update my Instagram story throughout the day um, with more of my personal life. You know, if somebody follows me on Instagram, they know that I have three kids, I'm married, I have dogs, we're really involved in our church, we get back to the community, we like to travel and it's so powerful building that personal brand which can be done on social media and YouTube. That's really good because and one thing you said is you interviewed the mayor and you had him on a video. Is your target market it, the impression you're or the goal is to give them like you're the leader of the industry? Or is it more or less like I'm just your neighbor next door? Like you can easily talk to me, ask me anything just for like just to track buyers and seller leads. That's a great question. My ultimate goal is to be top of mind. So if you're constantly up dating, you know, uploading on YouTube and updating your Instagram story, anybody that follows me or that's searching for a realtor, I want them to find a lot of content where it's a brand that they can know, like, and trust. And I tell agents all the time, lean into your personal brand. I mean, my personal brand is I'm a mom with three boys, three kids. And a lot of my clients are actually moms with kids and they relate with my content. So I think some agents might get worried to lean too much into their brand that they might take out some of their buyer pool or seller pool. But now even having my kids come on YouTube, like I'm just, that's who I am. And if you follow me, you'll, you'll feel like, you know, me more on a personal level to where you can trust me. And then my ultimate goal is if anyone's asked, who do you think of when you think of Queen Creek realtor or Chandler realtor, I want them to say Shannon Gillette. How should an agent measure their success on social media? Well, I think a lot of realtors, like I mentioned earlier, they really want that fast result. They want to get their real estate license, post a few videos and see a huge return. Nope. But social media and video, it requires a lot of patience and a lot of hard work, and it requires a lot of discipline. You have to have a plan in place for your content filming. Um, it's You're never going to be in the mood to get in front of the camera and film. And it just comes down to consistency. Mm -hmm. And you have to be prepared for it to take a few years before you see the results. And I think realtors give up too fast. They post a few videos. They don't get any calls. So then they say video doesn't work for me. Or they have all the excuses in the world of why they don't want to be on camera or they're not good on camera. And anything we do, our first listing presentation, our first time out with buyers, you're probably nervous your first time and you're not going to be that great the first time. But the more you do something, the better you get. So it's really just comes down to that consistency and discipline and getting the content out there and just being patient. Yeah. One of the struggles I think, and this could be an excuse, is and correct me if I'm wrong, is it easier for women to be to build a brand through social media versus guys? 
I think anybody can build a brand. I think you have to find out what is your personal brand. So take a piece of paper out and write the top four things that are most important to you mm -hmm. besides just being a realtor. If you're a guy and you like to hike or you like dog parks or you like to travel, I mean, that's your brand and you have to mix it up. You can't just post nonstop real estate. I think a lot of people have realized that now with Instagram, like you can't, I don't really see a ton of agents doing it like I used to with it's like just sold, just listed. That's all their content is. I think people understand that. But what I'm starting to implement that I haven't seen a lot of agents do over on YouTube is it, implementing my personal brand on YouTube. So take my family and I just went to like a, a Christmas event and I brought my videographer along and you can kind of follow us along because YouTube is so powerful. I mean, my kids are literally, they watch YouTube all day long. They don't even watch TV. Yeah. And it's just people walking around with their camera doing crazy things. So anybody can have a personal brand and you're going to attract the clients that you want to work with. Mm. I really don't have to do any cold calling, door knocking, open houses. People are just calling me saying things like, I just watched your YouTube video from 2019. Will you list my $2 million house? That's, That's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> would you, would you say that your your focus on YouTube obviously that's been the, the your your main focus or at least as of recently I know you said that uh, last year it was very heavy on Instagram would you say that it's more on YouTube Shorts or is it long form are you taking long form and chopping it up into shorts are you re you know reusing that information and that uh, content on Instagram is it different information on on uh, Instagram. I'm getting the come list me calls or the calls of like, hey, I live in California. We want to buy in Arizona. I just saw your YouTube channel. I'm getting most of the success from more of the long form content because people are willing to watch this. So I do a mix of videos over on my YouTube. Number one, listing video marketing. Every single agent should be doing a professional video for every home they list, no matter what the price point. And it shouldn't just be a video or a drone of the house. You should be on camera. Mm. This helps you build your personal brand. So I have a listing video for every home I've ever listed on my YouTube channel. And then I do lifestyle video. So things I've been to every hot spot in my town, things to do, paddle boarding, things to do with my kids, like so many different things. And then this year, it's been a game changer. I found a local studio in my market that has, you know, great lighting, background and teleprompter. And I'm doing frequently asked question videos. So my clients have a video for every step of the way, like congratulations, your home's under contract. Here are the next steps. And then if you see me over on Instagram, I have a lot of reels where I'm in the studio. So I'm answering frequently asked questions that way. I'm also up uploading the Instagram sh or the YouTube shorts. I'm not seeing a ton of success with YouTube, sh YouTube shorts personally yet, but I'm sure eventually, you know, that will grow too. It's all about the consistency, Shannon. <laughs> yeah. You just got to schedule it and think of it like a $5 million listing presentation because if nobody's ever going to want to film video, it's horrible. I, I never know what to say. I have to write my scripts in advance, get in front of the camera. I think this is so ridiculous. Nobody wants to watch this, but then you keep doing it and you're consistent. And then you get that reward of the call with people are like, Hey, I just watched your YouTube videos. Will you list my house? Yeah. One thing that you, you kind of made it very clear, uh, is it, it, when people try to think of what they need to do to be active on, you know, social media platforms, create video content, they think of an image of a, a salesperson and they try to imitate that, which comes off as, uh, ingenuine or not them. Um, but what with you, what you said earlier, it's complete being genuine, being passionate about what you're passionate about and showing it to everybody. So that way you attract people who are similar to you and they naturally just want to work with you because they feel like you're the same person. Yeah, it's so powerful. And I just feel like any agent that's not implementing this, they're losing business. And video is the future. You can't get away from video, getting your face on camera. We all know that. But basically, I would just suggest Realtors 2023, just get in front of the camera and schedule that content. I find a lot of success in batch filming where I, you know, twice a month, I'm going to the studio and knocking a, a bunch of stuff out. But I'm at every one of my listings, you know, when the photographer's there, the videographer's there, I'm standing in front of the house, reading, you know, my script, introducing people to the home. And sellers are so impressed by this. And 
video tells a story of the home and it truly is selling the home. If you can really learn how to market your listings and get them in front of thousands, you'll see huge success from that. And I've literally, we, we sold a home to a professional baseball player that was watching or playing an online video game and saw one of our home video commercials, scheduled a showing and bought the house. And the reason why he saw that video and didn't see it like in the MLS was that home was a three bedroom. And, you know, it was like $1.3 million. It was a three bedroom with a den. His search was set up to four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So had we not done our video marketing and get our ads out there, he would have never seen the property probably. So marketing is so powerful and every product out there is marketed to us. And I'll never understand why realtors aren't implementing more marketing for their listings You know, if you're not doing a video or marketing your listings, you're really, it's a disservice to the seller. Like you're taking a shortcut by just throwing (laughs) photos up on MLS, especially in this new market. Talk to us. I couldn't agree more. I think, um, you know, it's, it's, you should always be doing things to make, of course, your product in any industry stand out, right? So it's your competitive edge, but, but even more so now, like you said, in this competitive market where, you know, we have to get back to the basics a bit, right? It's a unique market. We have to work two, three, four times harder to get deals together. You have to be doing it today. So I couldn't agree with you more about that. Tell us a little bit more about your process. I know you said you're doing your content in the studio. How, when you come up with ideas, where are you logging them? How are you coming up with ideas? And when you go in there, how many times, you know, how many attempts does it take to get things right? Just, I think people would sort of relate to, to some of those situations. Well, I think I don't, I'd be lying if I said it's easy. It's a lot of hard work, but I spend my time creating content, not cold calling or door knocking. So it's a lot of time. I mean, I'm spending, you know, Instagram will log how much time you're spending on the app each day. Mine's usually two to three hours. And a lot of that is just engaging with other accounts, building a community, but also watching reels, saving reels for inspiration, saving audio, and just keeping a note, you know, in my phone of ideas. And then, the day before my my studio filming, I'll just write out the scripts and think about questions my clients are asking. And I want my clients to have a video for every step of the way. And I put that on YouTube for the public because people are searching that. Like I have a video that explains what are seller closing costs. And I've literally sold homes from that video because other potential sellers were found that video online. So I think that's great. And then people want to see out in your community. They want to see, you know, the best restaurants. And that's just a whole nother way to find people if they're searching. And before I upload anything on YouTube, I ask myself, would somebody be Googling this? Like they're not going to Google my favorite holiday traditions. They're going to Google where to go look at Christmas lights, things like that. So it's been so powerful. I think YouTube is just, I mean, it's definitely one of my favorite platforms for generating leads. Yeah you're very intentional like with a lot of it and one thing that you said earlier with the baseball player who bought the three in den was it targeted specifically to him based off of his searches that he was doing before that or was it just by chance that he because he was looking at real estate it popped up and that was the listing that was there so we're running a lot of different ads based upon radius what are they Googling? So asking ourselves, what would the perfect buyer be doing? Are they on Zillow? Are they looking up mortgage rates? Are they checking stock prices? Like things like that. So we have a lot of targeted ads also based upon job title. So we'll even run ads to other realtors. So they're seeing the video as well. Mm. And it's been just huge because people are literally seeing these videos and we know it because when we host an open house, we'll ask everybody that walks in, how'd you hear about the home? And a lot of people will say, I saw the video on Facebook. I saw the video on YouTube. I saw it on Instagram. And then you have to have a call to action. So we use Rela, HQ.com for our property website. So every home we list has its own beautiful website with domain name. And um, that's been huge because then even our clients will share that on their social media pages. And I, I see so many agents, they're literally on their Instagram sharing the Zillow link or sharing the MLS link. And it's just not a great presentation. Yeah. And why would you share the Zillow link for your listing out to the world? They, they'll probably schedule a showing with a random Zillow agent. So our clients just really deserve more and they are paying a good amount of money for you to list and sell their home. So you should be doing everything you can to market that home and get it in front of the right buyers. Yeah. One thing I could I 
definitely um, like it's impressive is that uh, you're basically looking for the errors in the marketplace and you're finding solutions because a lot of buyers agents who are working with buyers should be spending their time on the MLS looking up inventory that fits their buyers needs. You're targeting yeah, your and, ads towards them <laughs> to help them yeah. do their job. <laughs> yeah. And a video just tells a story of the home. So mm -hmm. we'll do drone of the parks or if they're shopping nearby or the walking trails. So if you watch one of our listing videos, you'll see like you'll get to experience like you're really there in person and we're writing a script. So instead of just showing, you know, a three bedroom, two bath home, we're explaining the features and benefits. And I'm trying to keep the video short to around a minute because the average human attention span is only about eight seconds. So you have to be fast moving and quick and grab that attention. Um, but it's just so powerful. And then that video is also on MLS. So when the buyers, if they do find it on MLS, they're watching a video. And then, you know, our videos have thousands of views. So it may, it creates urgency and it makes that potential buyer want the home even more. Yeah. And, and here's a thought that came to my mind. And I'm, I'm curious to see what your answer is. The, the We grew up in a, a sales system where it's like hit the phones. Everything else is a distraction. And to a certain aspect, I would agree with it, but then with kind of leading the field with knowing that things are adapting and being foolish to that, I think is uh, ignorant, not being aware of it. And we're learning that through the process. Um, but the, I guess the question would be is how do you scale that, like being able to create content, use video, go from the accomplishments of uh, what you did in 2020 and how do you try to hit the goal of- 2022. For, sorry, for 2022, how do you hit the goal of 2023 using that strategy? They say content's king, right? Just getting yeah. the content out there and constantly Googling yourself to see what do buyers find? We have a beautiful website. We have our own app in the app store. We have on our website, tons of videos. So we want to look like the best choice if somebody is researching who to hire. And in this new market, trust me, these clients really care who their agent is and they are researching you like crazy. So making sure everything looks good, your Google business page, all of that, and just getting in front of the camera and you really can never have enough content go out there and leaning into your personal brand so you can really attract that potential client that can relate with you. And then it makes your job even more fun because then you're working with people that are literally like your friends because you have so much in common and it's just so powerful. But but the great thing with real estate is you can be successful. You just have to pick one or two things and be consistent and go all in and be disciplined. And you have to have a plan in place when that starts to pay off because some realtors give up too fast. Maybe they go all in on cold calling and then all of a sudden now they've got a few buyers and they stop their calls. I'm very busy. I lead one of the top teams. I'm actively in production. I show homes, I sell homes, but I will always continue to film this content. And I have every excuse in the world why I don't have time to go to the studio or get in front of the camera, but I continue to be consistent. And you know, you have to just get in front of the camera. You'll get better over time and be very intentional with your calendar. You know, people say, I don't have time to do that. I mean, get up an hour earlier, stop watching Netflix. I think it's really powerful to have a coach. I used to be a huge skeptic on coaching. I, I have a coach now. And I also have a virtual assistant that helps me with all the back end stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I used to get up just last year, I was getting up at 4 a.m. to make my YouTube thumbnails, doing everything myself. And my coach day one's like, Shannon, what are you doing? You need to have help. You can't do this all yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you said a lot there and a lot that we agree with personally. I mean, we both have coaches. We both have uh, more than uh, a few virtual assistants uh, who help us with, you know, non-income producing activities, things that yep. need to get done throughout the day. So uh, I think we can connect with you on a lot of different levels. And I think people watching this will connect with you on that those levels as well. Dive into the, the YouTube uh, process with me a little bit further. So you're in the studio. You're filming the content. Obviously, it's coming out, you know, in a really um, uh, strong and, and and great presentation. High, you know, it, it's really great production, I should say. When you're putting it out there on YouTube, are you are you really paying a lot of attention into like SEO and hashtags and making it making sure it's you know at the top of every search? Like, are there any yes. sort of like insight you could give to people other than like the thumbnails and? that your process of just making sure you're getting a lot of views? 
We've had huge success using, and I say we, it's it's me and my VA who helps me run my YouTube channel, but the Tube Buddy, because it'll tell you if you put in your title what to tag the video. So there's many steps involved in getting your YouTube video published. You have to upload the video and then you have to add in the tags and that could be what people are searching. So I have literally sold multi-million dollar homes because I tagged a few videos, best realtor in Chandler, Arizona, even though the video had nothing to do with that. Maybe it was a Chandler listing, but we have to ask ourselves, what are people Googling? So a seller went to YouTube and put in best realtor in Chandler, Arizona, and my YouTube channel came up. And YouTube, we all know this. I mean, when you go to Google and you type in realtor in Chandler, Arizona, YouTube videos come up. So it's an easy way to get into the top of the search there. So using TubeBuddy has been huge and really filming content that people are going to be Googling and researching that so you can be found in the searches. And I do believe in professional video. I do a professional professional video for every home I list. I do the studio. I do the, you know, I'm also on a TV show that airs locally on Fox, but you don't have to have your own TV show to have success in this because some of my best performing videos are the videos I shot with my iPhone. I literally made $60,000 off of a video I filmed at a new home community with my iPhone. The audio is horrible. Everything's horrible, but sometimes people just like seeing that organic type of behind the scenes videos. And also one other tip I have as far as YouTube goes is thinking of about like what are questions people ask you? Maybe it's not even anything to do with real estate. So my family and I, we live four hours away from Rocky Point, Mexico. It's a four hour drive. We just went there yesterday. So we go to Rocky Point, Mexico often. And on Instagram, I was getting so many questions on, is it safe there? Where do you stay? What do you do? So I got my iPhone out and just filmed a video of our top 10 travel tips to Rocky Point, Mexico. I don't even talk about real estate in it, but at the end I say, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That video has 40, thousand views. I mean, it's organically found by all of these Arizona residents that now follow me on Instagram and I'm selling homes from a video that wasn't even real estate related. So the sky is the limit. It just comes down to being consistent and disciplined and stop the excuses of why you're not implementing video in your business. What are some lessons you, you would say that you've learned, you know, Shannon today versus Shannon five years ago, other than consistency, because that seems to be the consistent Key key here. Other than consistency, what are some lessons you've learned over the last couple of years? Well, it's hard not to just dive right into that consistency because <laughs> last year and the past two years, we know we just got out of a crazy market. Everyone thought I was crazy. Even realtors and even some sellers would tell me like, why are you doing so much to market a listing that will sell with multiple offers in a day? Why are you investing in video? Why are you doing ads for a home that'll sell in a day? But I have been doing this for so long. I see the return and I'm just happy I never gave up because yes, the market was crazy. And yes, I could have thrown your home on MLS and probably sold it in a day. But my listings had more exposure, more offers, maybe even sold probably for more just because of the urgency you can create with this beautiful presentation. Um, so I've definitely learned a lot of lessons over 17 years, but ultimately knowing that nothing is going to happen overnight. You just have to be patient. And as long as you work hard and you're putting in full-time hours, because I think if you ask a lot of realtors how many hours they work a week, they might only be working part-time hours, but expecting a full-time income, you have to put in the work and it's not easy. And even when things start to get comfortable, you can't be comfortable. I'm constantly listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos of, of how I can take it to the next level. You just always have to be adapting to the new and latest trends. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild, the consistent uh, or the common messages you hear from top performers in the industry. Because it's always, like, as I listen to it, I'm like, I feel like we hear it over and over again, but it's so true. Like, everything you're saying is so rock solid and, and kind of staying ahead of the game. And that's why you are one of the top 15 teams uh, in your marketplace. Um, I, I guess one of the biggest things, too, to think about is that the videos you're creating are video assets that will be watched for years and years to come and will pay dividends for years and years to come as well. Uh, did you have that in mind when you were being consistent and being told those negative things? Or what was what were you telling yourself when you yeah. were being uh, brought down by other people. I honestly was doing it, not thinking, cause some people think, Oh, you just do video to get buyer leads or you just do video for your portfolio. But I have seen, I have received the calls of buyers that, or seen them walk into an open house saying, I saw the ad. 
I want to buy the house. So I will never list a home. Even when I listed my own personal home, I still did all of this marketing for our listings because I see the results. So honestly, that's why I was doing it. I never want to cut corners. I've only ever received a five-star review with my clients and they deserve the best. They deserve for us as their realtor who they're trusting with their biggest asset to go all into their marketing or you know, all into their home search, whatever it is. Because in my market, there's over 55,000 licensed realtors. The average person in my town knows eight realtors personally. So it is very competitive. You have to stand out and you have to understand that we're helping people with where they're going to raise their family or their biggest asset or their retirement or whatever their story is. So if by you getting in front of the camera and getting out of your comfort zone can help your seller sell their home for more, how would you tell them, no, I'm not going to do a video because I don't like how I look on camera. The video is not for you. It's for mm -hmm. your client or the consumer that you're trying to help. The, the fear that came in my mind as I was visualizing, like, you know, that's, that, this is doable. I could do this. You're like inspiring me. I'm like, but damn, I like to look homeless around my city. Like, I don't want to be always dressed like up and like looking <laughs> professional. Cause if they see like, is that, is that guy the one that we saw in the video? <laughs> that would be like a fear that would come to my mind. Um, but you lean into your brand, right? Like I, I dress very maybe, professional. Maybe homeless and, could be your brand. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's an agent in my town that wears a black polo and a baseball hat in all of his videos. That's his brand. People relate with that. Hmm. And there's enough real estate out there for all of us. And people will, you know, relate to like my more professionally dressed brand. But I might turn off some people that don't like that I'm, you know, wearing high heels and a suit jacket to show homes. Yeah. But we just have to understand what our brand is and just go all in and let people in on your personal life too. So they can really feel like they know, like, and trust you. And you have to have a life outside of real estate because real estate will take over your life if you let it. <laughs> That's so, a common thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, on, on that topic, be honest with us here. You're on vacation with your family in Mexico and you pull out the phone and you make another video. There has to be times where your husband or your kids are like, mom, another video. Like, yeah. This is all you ever do. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So in the early days of Instagram and updating my Instagram story all throughout the day, getting my camera out at dinner, like, hey, we're at our favorite restaurant. My family did get a little annoyed with it. But I mean, my GCI is over a million dollars. I can tell my kids we are on this vacation because of Instagram and my hard work. So they understand now and they don't get as annoyed. And I've been doing it for so long that it's not it's it's so fast because your Instagram story is really only two minutes of your day. So I can just get my phone out really fast, hit post and people almost feel like your friends, like the people we follow on Instagram, we maybe never have met in real life, but we know them. We know their dog's name. We know their husband. And you're building this community that's so powerful mm -hmm. and getting your face in front of the camera. Even if you pull out your iPhone and you're just talking into the camera, it's like you're talking to your audience and you can't get caught up with how many people are following you. Even if you have 20 people following you and watching your story every day, they're going to hopefully think of you when it's time for them to buy or sell and feel like they can trust you with their referrals and it's just so so powerful no that's valuable the the one thing that's a byproduct of all that content too is a recruiting tool right so i'm pretty sure there's people always hitting you up saying like how do i join your team how do i get into the industry and yeah. that's like a, a big benefit too because that pays dividends as well right yeah so that has been a struggle of mine and something my coach is working with me on because for so many years I was a solo agent. I was literally a solo agent up until 2020. That's when I brought on one agent on my team and it's slowly grown, but we have built such a great brand amongst the real estate community that I put a video out there. Of course, like it was a video of like, Hey, we have one spot open on our team. Here's how awesome we are. And I had a hundred agents apply. Wow. And I'm really building more of a very small, but mighty team. But my coach is like, Shannon, you have so many agents that want to join your team. Why aren't you growing more? Um, but that's my own struggle. But the cool thing is I recently actually left my local brokerage and joined Real Broker. And now I can build a community all throughout the United States and Canada and other agents can kind of join under our network. And it's been so huge. I'm so excited about, you know, being a part of this brokerage because I've always only been with like your local yep. small brick and mortar brokerage. Well, if it's if it's your brand, right? Because it's like innovative. It's like staying ahead of the, you know, the that adapting curve, really. Yeah, and the collaboration and technology and and all of that, and and I think 
that's another thing with, with realtors is like, are you with a brokerage that's giving you the training to become better on video or implement social media or technology? Because that is the future. You, you can't get away from that. Yeah, no, absolutely. If I was somebody who knew you when you first started the industry, what is some of the top five things that they would say like uh, you've done completely different or changed about you uh, in that timeline? Well, a lot of people will tell me if, if you ever meet me in person, I'm actually very shy and very quiet. So people that do know me on a personal level, they're like, how are you so comfortable on camera? Like you're so quiet in person, but it's literally a skill acquired over filming hundreds and hundreds of videos, yeah. which I can't even really explain it. Um, so I, I get that a lot. And I think a lot of people will tell me, man, you make it look so easy, you know, that everything's so great. And that's the downside of social media, but it's not easy. I really want people to know like this is hard work and it takes a lot of sacrifice to be consistent and disciplined with content content creation and, you know, growing your real estate business. Um, and I wish I said it gets easier with time, but you know, I'm on a never ending journey to be up to date with the love, the latest trends and implementing new things all the time. And I just don't ever want to get too comfortable. I think that's the hardest thing is one, having faith that what you're going to do is actually going to pay dividends because you could be consistent as hell. But then if you're not having faith that it's going to work, you're going to lose the level of intention you have towards those, like doing all that research, the R and D, like we spent five hours yeah. shooting a couple of videos and when it gets like a hundred views, I'm like, mother effort. Like, <laughs> do you know how much time it was wasted? Um, well, it, you know, if you follow people like Alex Hermosi on, yeah. on uh, Instagram. Consistency is always the common thing that comes in. Yeah. He'll, he'll be like, listen, you know, I had my, he had his own podcast for, or I think he still has it, but he's like, if I look back, he's like, my first 150 videos was absolutely dreadful. He's like, I had no views. I, I didn't know what I was talking about. I had, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't scripted. I wasn't conversational. I, he's like, I was still learning during those. And I mean, I now we've done, I think, 40 something, 35 episodes here. I mean, it feels like 300. But to look back at some of those early ones, it was just, you know, you're constantly improving. Yeah. yeah. And experience is the greatest teacher. Nobody's going to be perfect at anything, you know, their first video or whatever it is. So just starting is key for sure. Action is better than perfection. I love that. And not to really nerd out on it, but it's it, like what doing this, this platform has taught me so much because I, first of all, it's absolutely horrible to watch back a recording of yourself, <laughs> right? You hear your own voice. You're like, oh my God. Why did I say that? I've I been sound, enjoying them, actually. I, 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 you know, <laughs> I, I don't sound the way I wanted to sound, or I didn't like how I asked that question, or you know, sometimes we'll talk over each other, but it's helped me, actually, I think, become you know, a better speaker all around. You, know, you really better, you, you, know, you prepare for guests, and you, you're preparing questions, and you want to make sure that you're asking questions that are, are more thoughtful and, and you know, not talking over people, but all around. You know, when I do those videos, anything that you can record and watch back, you can you can improve on, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, how would you know? How would you be able to track your improvement if you couldn't look back at some of those old those old videos? Yeah, you know? no, that's true. And also, you have to have somebody in your life, whether it's a coach or a spouse or somebody that'll be honest with you. I mean, sometimes I post reels and I'll show my husband, he's like, delete that right now. It's not good. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll delete it. And then I'm so thankful that he was honest with me um, because there are some things probably that shouldn't be posted, but you do have to kind of just get out of your own head and get the content out there, no matter what platform you choose. And that's good. When we, when, a couple of the videos that we, um, or podcast episodes when we put them out there. I have one of my good buddies, he'd be like, you sound very shy. You, you spoke way too quick on that part. You mumbled this part. And I'm like, mm -hmm. give me the worst, give me the worst. I need to improve on all these things. And that's so true because um, having that around you just allows you to be able to uh, and just improve overall. The, the one thing that's interesting to me from this conversation that we're having is there's there's steps of everything that you're doing to adapt through video content and pushing it out there. And it's almost like a connection between your presence online in that marketplace and the percentage of market share you take over. It's almost like the, what's the goal for 2023? Okay, it's doing 100 million in volume. And the goal to get there is by just creating a lot more content. 
Now, is there anything different that you're going to do in addition to the addition of content that's going to be created? So I'm new to the whole team leader role. So that's something that my coach is working through because I'm very much in production. So I'm busy with my own clients, but yet, you know, I have a small team that also needs my assistance. So I really want to be able to pour more into them with everything that I've learned so then they can sell more homes on their own as well. So whether that is maybe them implementing something else like like if they do want to do cold calling or a bunch of open houses. Um, so really kind of stepping up that team leadership role because I have learned so much over my career. And that also involves me taking a little bit of a step back in production. Um, like my coach tells me I shouldn't be taking buyers out. You know, I should maybe fo be focusing on more of the luxury listing side of things. So definitely in the new year, I'm going to be implementing some of that just to help yeah. grow. That's awesome. Hey, you know, I'm just going to make a suggestion here. It could be worthless, whatever the case is, but I have to say it. You're a powerful woman, just like Tina Call. Tina Call is an awesome individual that you should a thousand percent connect with. Because yeah, I love her. I listen oh. to her podcast with you guys, and she literally, I felt like I was listening to like me in ten years because yes. even when she's like, I eat lunch and dinner in my car. That's literally me. I eat lunch in my car every day while I'm out showing homes. And so I related so much with that. Yeah. Um, but that's where that coach comes into play is really to help you see the business aspect that maybe you're missing just because that's all I've ever known. I've always only been in production. And then this team has kind of grown just out of necessity because I have so many inbound leads. I can't handle them myself. It, what's your conversion process in terms of... It? Because when you're doing these, like the, the video content, you're attracting people who are similar to you and have common interests. So it's probably very easy for you to communicate with them, convert them. How is that process going to work for someone else who joins? So that is one thing I do want to implement more of because honestly, I've just always put the content out there and they just have to find me and call me and they do. They'll find my number and call me or, um, but I don't have any type of like landing page or call to action. It's more of like follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my channel. So it's always been like the clients have to just figure out how to reach out to me, which it's just always been inbound and it's been awesome. Yeah. But I want to implement more of that in 2023 where maybe they could download a free guide or something. But we also do so much client appreciation. I'm investing over $40,000 a year in just client appreciation events. In 2023, we have an event every month, whether it's an Easter egg hunt or renting out a water park. So we're always top of mind with our clients and getting that content out there, which that also helps build that community where people want to work with us. Mm -hmm. So we've just always attracted so many clients. This is this is off topic a little bit, but it, in high school before the leasing job, what did you want to do for work as a career? I barely graduated from high school. I so I basically just right out of high school, got a job leasing apartments and ended up being really good at sales. And I was raised by a single mom. We didn't have a lot growing up. So I always had to work for everything. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, I never want to go back to that nine to five office job. So I know I have to work very hard every day. The reason why I ask that is you have a strong uh, like goal towards building community. It's like you've mentioned it several times, whether yeah. it's going to be a community within the social network, a community within agents that want to learn more about how to do what you're doing, a community with the agents and the, the, your community is something that seems big. So it's, it's interesting that like from high school, maybe you weren't the brightest crayon in the box, but you, <laughs> you stumbled upon something in a path that opened the doors really big. And it's just kind of crazy that you had no intention of doing something around building a community, but now you're doing that in an industry that is known for not <laughs> being community oriented yeah. and just being very cutthroat. Yeah. No, I think I think that's a good point. And it probably comes back from, you know, growing up without a lot. So we also, everyone on our team is actively involved in serving the community. We just took 300 kids living in foster care on a shopping spree for Christmas at Walmart. Yeah. Like we're giving back to the just people in need as well. So that's also helping build your brand. And real estate is a people business. I mean, we're helping people with their biggest asset. So you should have the heart to want to help people. If you're only in it for money, you're probably never going to be happy and not be attracting a lot of clients. Yeah. It, that's a really good point. <laughs> what, what does your average, like how many hours would you say you're investing into work every week? Like on a, on average rolling 12. So 
you know, I definitely work seven days a week because now I have my team calling me, my clients calling me. Um, but it's been so huge having that VA. I, I took way too long to hire any type of help because I always told myself I could do it faster myself. I don't want to pay anybody to do this. So that's taken a lot off my plate as well. And one tip that I have is we, my family and I do like to travel often. So I always have some type of trip on the horizon, whether it's just a weekend away or Disneyland or something, because that helps me get through the day. And that's how I can kind of disconnect from real estate is when I'm not physically in town because then I can't go show a home or go head over, you know, to a listing appointment because everything is just so urgent and last minute in real estate. Like I could get a call right now with somebody that says, Hey, can you come over to my house tonight at five? I'm like, sure, I'll be right there. You know? So, um, it's, it's really tough. I think people that aren't in this industry don't understand all that goes into it. You can never turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we, I always say it's, it's when you decide to get your license, if you're really going to go all in, and try to do this at a very, very high volume, it's a lifestyle, right? It's just, mm-hmm. and, and you know, it affects everybody around you, your family in good ways, um, yeah. but you always have to be on. Yeah. Right? That, that's actually a really good point because for women who are trying to do the same thing that you've done, right? Having a strong support group, which it sounds like you've had, is critical. How does somebody do that if they're just starting into creating content and needing that support? How do they set that intention? How do they create that support system? I think being very intentional with your calendar and scheduling, especially moms with kids, my kids are young still. So scheduling in, sometimes I even have to schedule like dinners with my family because I'm out showing homes late at night, scheduling in time, you know, date nights or one-on-one time. I have three boys. So scheduling that just like you schedule your listing appointments or your showings with buyers, because real estate will take over your calendar if you're not intentional and also getting up an hour early, not spending your time doing things that aren't helpful. Like you, I don't watch any traditional TV, you know, I'm using every minute of my day, very intentional. Um, and you know, I'll never, also you have to have your non-negotiables. Like I'll never not go to church. That's something that's really important to me. I'll never miss one of my kids football games. Cause that's just very important to me. And, um, you know, it's, and then you're living more of a balanced life. So you don't get that burn burnt out feeling that most realtors get. And then you have a sense of that's, I was reading a book by Ed Milet. It's called The Power of One More. He talks about, mm-hmm. you know, having equanimity and then, you know, goals. The opposite side of that coin is standards. So you're talking about non-negotiables that you're setting in your life. Uh, what are some examples of non-negotiables in your business? Well, I think talking about non-negotiables, it's really important for any business owner or team leader or realtor to have core values. And you have to have your core values that are so strong that you're you're willing to lose money over. Like we've got our core values with the Gillette Group, integrity being number one, like we'll be very honest. I mean, giving back to the community is one of our core values. So I think that's so important to have those in place. So then, you know, if something goes against your core value, you're willing to say, no, I'm not taking that listing because it goes against you know, what our foundation is. But yeah, I mean, family obviously is number one, but it's it's very difficult. It's not easy running, you know, a great real estate team plus being a mom and a wife and all the other things. And I just want to say, you you say team, but it's really you <laughs> in the beginning of it, right? Which is insane um, that you do this much with, you know, handling all aspects of it. Um, so your next hire, right now you're attracting some agents that are coming in what's do you have any staff that's planning to be hired like what's uh, what's the the next hires for you look like well we've been toying around with i had a full-time videographer but it didn't work out so now i've been kind of working with like a separate company um so that would probably be the next hire um just like full-time content 40 hours a week because there's never ending content that can be created. But as far as staff, I mean, obviously always having a TC, we shouldn't be doing our own paperwork. Um, And then my virtual assistant. So I don't know what the future holds. I'm sure my my coach will be pushing me to grow more in 2023. Well, it seems like you're going to be attracting it naturally. So uh, (laughs) that's that's pretty awesome. I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when you brought that videographer to your family's event. That would have been great just to see reactions like what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Shannon, thank you so much for for spending some time with us today. Um, I think people will find this immensely valuable. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk to a lot of people on this platform that are putting out um, lots of different content. But, you know, I think this is uh, a valuable lesson on just really diving deep and putting a big focus on YouTube um and building your brand and going all in 
and and doing all the things that uh, you know uh, make us help our clients at a much higher level, like you yeah. said, right? Like, you know, you answered actually one of my questions without me even asking it. It was going to be, well, you know, Shannon, what would you say to a seller who says, you know what? Or what would you say to an agent who says, Shannon, why are you doing all that work? The listing's probably going to sell if you just price it correctly. But, uh, you know, I loved your response. It's, it's uh, you know, you're doing that because that's the right thing to do. You're doing that, that because you want to market the different features of that house. You want to mark, you want to make sure you have that portfolio and, and you know, treat every listing the same way. So I, yeah. I, res I respect your approach and I think you're doing it at a very, very high level. And I think people will certainly certainly find this valuable. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I, I answer every DM over on Instagram. So if anyone has any questions, you can connect with me over there at Shannon underscore Gillette. Awesome. Sounds good. Awesome. And if you're in a hospital, do not. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Not, damn, Shannon, <laughs> this is awesome. Is there, if someone wanted to know more about a uh, real or was interested in Phoenix, reach out all on Instagram as well. Yeah, so I actually am setting up setting up one on one calls with agents. So over on my Instagram, you'll find a link um, to set up a call with me if you're interested in taking your business to the next level. You want to learn more about Real Broker. I'm a huge fan. I've been here about a month, and it's literally like blown my mind. And there's a reason why all of the big names in real estate are coming over to Real. Awesome. Well, we're excited for you. Thank you. Excited to see the journey for sure too. So thank you again.